Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. We have with our guest kind of someone who personifies that. We'll be right back with Doug Berry. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. It's so great to have Hawaii opening up again and so many so many people coming. We missed all of our our uh, all of our tourists, I call them our guests, and so many friends and family are showing up here on the shores of Waikiki. It's like they're they're drifting in from somewhere. I don't know, maybe the tide's bringing them in. But one of the things the tide has brought in is uh, Doug Berry, uh, someone that is an inspiration to all of us. His ministry, Radex, is interesting because uh, it comes from the word radical, <laughs> and we have that same word in our in our uh, in our creed. The most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself mm-hmm. to the wild adventure of God's will. And by the way, that doesn't mean when we say the, the wild, that doesn't mean that nice little walkway that goes in between the houses on in in the suburbs, and it doesn't mean the the fairway rough. <laughs> It means the wild. God is wild. Just look at quasars. Just look at uh, just look at the the mountain lions and grizzlies and wolves in, in Glacier Park. Um, God is not someone you can put in a box and control. God is God is God. We're not. That's a good thing to know. But Doug Berry, would you tell us? I mean, the, the word radix, the na- you know, in your ministry, it's mm-hmm. such a powerful word. Can we just start there, and then we'll get into our conversation. Yeah, you bet. And great to be with you again, Bear. You know, radix is a Latin word. Radix, radix. It's pronounced both ways. It's a Latin word, and it means root. And the idea of the radix, the idea of being radical, you know, root, radix, get to the root, get to the heart of it. You know, it's the one thing that I really think is is missing in evangelization these days is really getting to the heart and the root of what what Christ's message is for the world about redemption. You know, the radical to the root, to the heart or what it is to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and love your neighbors yourself. You talk about the idea of being wild, getting out of the wild, really breaking out of the box and not not seeing the confines of, of you know loving a certain way here or there. But what does it mean to really love God? I mean with all the heart, all the mind, all the soul, all the strength. That is a radical idea, but it means get to the root, get to the heart of whatever it is we're dealing with. And we're talking about being radical, getting to the heart of what it is to have a relationship and encounter with God for now and for all eternity. That's beautiful. Yeah, get to the root, and it reminds me of of the scripture verse regarding John the Baptist. John the Baptist that he will he will lay the axe to the root. Yes. You know, they get yeah. get. Tell tell me what that because I'm sure you thought. Well, and every tree that, that doesn't, you know, yeah, that lights me up when you say that because John the Baptist has always been one of our kind of our patron saints of our ministry. We started it 31 years ago. And the idea that that particular passage, you know, when he's, he's crying out to the Pharisees, who warned you of the wrath to come, he says. You know, he says, you know, don't claim that you're children of Abraham because God can raise up these, these very stones and turn them into children of Abraham. But even now, the axe is being laid to the root of the tree, and every tree that does not bear good fruit is going to be cut down and thrown into the fire. Now, this is, these are bold words. In today's world, we couldn't talk that way without being canceled as they say nowadays mm-hmm. but that's that the cancel culture goes back to christ it goes back to the prophets who were paving the way paving the way for christ but the john the baptist would have been shut down immediately by everybody around him and yet he's the one that he Jesus was. says he was well, he, well, he was actually yeah he, had his head cut he off. was canceled yeah yeah he was right away his social media it's a warning to us down. it's a warning to us it is the times like that could, could be waiting for yeah. us the the, the guillotines really have been have fallen before you know yeah and, yeah but one thing we need to remember is that Jesus himself says that there is no man greater than John the Baptist born of woman. So mm-hmm. our Lord himself acknowledges, Jesus acknowledges who John the Baptist is and, and the power of his words. Otherwise, he would have said, yeah, John was a little extreme. Yeah, John needed a little more tact. 
He didn't do that. He didn't say that. Because he's the greatest man born of woman. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. If, if Jesus was here on earth today, uh, don't you think he'd be like hanging out at Starbucks and <laughs> and, and having poetry readings? Because he was a nice guy. I mean, he was, he was you know, he, he would be reading his, his poem. I like to think of it as the, the title of it would be, Why Can't We All Just Get Along? You know? Exactly. But yeah, no, yeah. Jesus said, I've, don't come think that I've come to bring peace. I've come to bring a sword. I've yep. come to bring a yep. fire, and how much I would it would, would already be burning. Uh, the, Jesus said the way is narrow, and uh, and and very and very few find it. It's difficult. It's narrow, and very few find it. But so, he's I mean, seeking. But he's seeking us out all the time. We have no excuse. There's oh, that is, call absolutely. within our heart. There is that upward yearning in our soul for God, and the reason why people deny it. Because they really want to go their own way, they're feeling mm -hmm. that call for 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 as uh, um, the, you know, uh, Father Spitzer says of, of, of beauty, of justice, of, of love, of truth, you know, yeah. a, and of God, and a desire to go home. But people want to marginalize God because that way they can go their own way and do what they want. Exactly, that's it. That's the whole idea of uh, the as, as it was referred to. In the, the, I live in, in Texas now, but when I was in Lincoln, Nebraska, we would hear in the mass intentions, the prayer intentions of mass regularly on Sundays, we'd hear to free us from the tyranny of moral relativism. Like you just described, it's I want my truth, you want your truth, I want to go my own way. Don't put me in some sort of Ten Commandment you know, type of mindset. Box. I don't want these rules and regs. You know, I don't want that box. I don't want that. Those are just suggestions. You know, and it's one of the number one things I've asked for years all over the country is how many people could stand up and recite the Ten Commandments, which our Lord tells the rich man is necessary to follow if you want to enter into everlasting life. And less than 1% of the people can do it. Now, some may know it, but they don't have the courage to stand up and do it. We should know it well enough to be able to stand up and recite it. Well, one of the most insipid lies of the enemy, and you know, he's really good at twisting scripture. He knows the, he knows the rules pretty good. He know, well, he knows that he because he's very legalistic. But I mean, he knows the word yeah. of God. He knows scripture. Is this this twisted? That's an insipid lie uh, that I I hear. Um, the, you know, I remember I was at the beach at a surf contest, and there was a the Christian surfers group was there, and I love them. They're great brothers and sisters. But they would were going along and asking the beat, asking people on the beach, "Have you given your life to Jesus Christ?" And I heard them. This is the instructions: If someone says they gave their life to the Lord when they were six years old, then you can you don't need to spend time with them. Go to the next person, because mm -hmm. there's that kind of there's that incipient lie that says, "Well, if you once once in your life made a decision for Christ that you're that you're once saved, always saved," right. can, which is not uh, which is not valid. I mean, it's not it, it's it's contrary to Catholic. Uh, Catholic teaching that we have to work out our salvation. Literally, it says in fear and trembling, what God has worked into us, we need to work out. In other words, it's just like it's just like uh, Abraham. God didn't say, "Hey Abraham, he here's a map. You know, go go to where this map takes you." He says, "Go to where I will lead you." It took a day by day, moment by moment, uh, a relationship with God to go on this journey. So can you, so we're not just talking about the cancel culture out there, but we're talking about within the churches itself, not just Protestants, in the Catholic Church themselves. There are so many people in the church that are not married but are living together. Mm -hmm. You know, and it just seems like, well, as long as we're committed to each other, there's kind of this this, this fog that's entered in, this the smoke of Satan, as uh, you know, as the, the, pope, the pope in the uh, 19th century said, has infiltrated the churches. So it's not just the cancel culture on the outside; it's what's going on inside the church too. This, 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 this fluffing up in the, uh, of, uh, of, of the of the gospel, making it soft and easy. And mm. well, you know, one, you know, that makes me think about one of my favorite quotes from all places was from a movie uh, where John Wayne plays Genghis Khan, which is a terrible casting idea, but they did it. <laughs> Yeah, and if you listen to his, he still has, <laughs> he sounds like he's out of true grit. The, the, or, during this whole COVID thing, my wife and I have watched every John Wayne movie, but we didn't watch that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's called The Emperor, The Conqueror, or something like this. But it's about Genghis Khan, and they shot it in the Nevada desert. Now, sadly, roughly 90 people who were on that cast and crew came down with cancer because it was an area where they, mm. not too far off, where they'd done a lot of atomic and nuclear uh, testing, bomb, you know, atomic bomb testing. So anyway, sad story on the side there. But in the movie, there's a scene where Genghis Khan and his men are about to invade some village. Uh, and the night before the 
we'll call him the the mayor, the you know, the elder of the village comes out to try to negotiate. And he says, why don't you bring your men in and we'll give them comfort. We'll give them wine, women's song, the whole nine yards. And it's either Genghis Khan or his wife in the scene that says, no, the men will stay out here and they will sleep on the ground because if they become too comfortable, they will get soft. If they get soft, they will get weak. If they get weak, they can't fight. And if they can't fight, they die. So when we take this more relativistic idea of I want to make my faith comfortable, even within the church, as you said, Bear, we are in this comfortable mindset. We become soft. And if we get soft, we get weak. You and I know that. We both work out, train. I mean, you get comfortable, you get soft. You get soft, you get weak, you get weak, you can't fight. And you get into a conflict spiritually and physically, and you're not on your best, uh, you'll go down. And so the idea is, I shorten it to, if you get too comfortable, you're going to die spiritually yeah. physically. So the idea here is within the faith, our Lord does not speak of comfort. There's nothing in the Gospels where Jesus says you go to heaven for being nice or getting along or being diplomatic. He says, be clever as a serpent, gentle as a dove. Yes, do all things with charity, but never, ever, ever, ever compromise the truth, even if it means your death, which he showed us, and then martyrs for 2,000 years to follow in that. Amen. So you're right, even within the church, we are seeing this excessive comfort, which is making us soft, weak, and, and oh. we're just not able to fight. And, we're, and we're, 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 we're going belly up soft like a dog I, rolling over is what we're doing. I, I just wish you would make it more clear. I mean, are, are you, uh, you're straddling <laughs> there. Hey, we're talking with Doug Berry from Red X. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to challenge the men out there to go to deepadventure.com and join Bear's Man Cave. It's been interesting. There's been kind of a flood of, of men uh, that are responding to this call. I think it's because of, of, as Doug was saying in an earlier segment, men do not want to be soft and we don't want to be comfortable. There's a call within each man to be heroic, and yet we know we're misfits. We know that we, uh, we, we, you know, we, we're shamed into isolation because of the challenges that some of us and failings that some of us have had or have. But that's why men need each other. That's, as the Bible says, iron sharpens iron. And so we have, that we have this call to you to go to deepadventure.com and join Bear's Man Cave. It's a secret Facebook group, as long as we're allowed still on Facebook. Uh, but we don't re you don't go there to join. You go to our website because there's a lot of other things going on besides just that group. And including uh, every two weeks, we have a Zoom video uh, program that we, we all get together and we, we talk story with each other. We have a, we have a process we're going through in the, in the pursuit of manliness, but uh, we actually get real with each other. Uh, but D Doug was talking a, a moment ago about Doug Berry, um, you know, kind of a rookie, kind of a soft man. Hey, Doug, we were talking about that, <laughs> that, that, that soft comfort 
you know, I went through a battle with prostate cancer, and I didn't tell anybody because I just wanted the, you know, being in the public a little bit. I didn't want to have everybody involved in the process. I just wanted to fight it. But in the process, they said, you need to carb up. It'll h- help uh, de- soothe, you know, gastro things that you're going to go through and stuff like that. And, dude, I, mo- you know, I'd lost a lot of, I don't go to the details, but I ended up gaining about 15 to 20 pounds, just soft, mm. mushy stuff. In my musculature, because it just took out, took all the, it sapped me. Um, it just, I got, I know, I know what you mean in the previous segment, my segment about getting soft. So I've been out, I'm, but now I'm, I have no excuses, no more, no more, the, the carbs are out of my life again. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm doing my hour at least every day of, of training, fit, uh, st- cardio and, uh, and strength training. My, 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 uh, my resting heart rate is below 60 again. So there is no excuse even after coming out of something like that. But we can't just challenge men and not give them a path. And you've got something, some really great new things that you're doing in your ministry that men can uh, uh, take advantage, you know, get access to. Can you talk to us about that? I, I know I get a get an update from you about once a week. I might yeah, your newsletter. And, and you're right, Bear. I didn't even know about your situation until the last time we talked. So I mean, praise God. You're, but I'm I mean, not soft anymore, man. I'm fighting well, back. But, and you know what that says? That says that when you when you hit a speed bump in life of some sort, you don't let it keep you there. And the other thing you is, know? is Doug, Doug, because I was so strong, I was able to take the hit. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's a big part of it, Bear. You're absolutely right. Is and I don't think a lot of people take that, you know, so seriously. Is that when we have those situations where we know we're going to get hit with something? And I had something similar about 11 years ago. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Yes. Oh. Generative autoimmune system uh, problem. It's like Crohn's disease type stuff. And I've been open about it and talking about it. I mean, it's not contagious or anything, but it hit me so hard that uh, over about seven, eight, nine months, I lost 50 pounds, couldn't work out. Then I had a relapse. I've been fighting it back and forth for years. Had a relapse on it about three years ago, give or take three and a half years. I was in bed for five weeks. I lost 25 pounds in a week. Couldn't even barely walk for about a week. It was so debilitating at the time. Now with mainly just primarily health, uh, diet changes, and rest and my wife is amazing and my kids praise are amazing. god for praise our wife god so. that oh yeah that yeah. was a big part of it i was able to come back so i got but here's the funny thing is after five weeks of being in bed i finally got up and i walked downstairs to my weight room and i just walked in and my first day back was i sat there and for about 10 minutes and just looked at the weights yeah dude I, I would look out the window and go how do those people have the strength to get up out of their beach chair yeah. and walk from there to there yeah, yeah. you know I know it, and it, it is so overwhelming mentally, psychologically, physically when you get hit with this type of thing. But that was my first day back, 10 minutes in the weight room. Then I went back a few days later. I, you know, I did a couple of light sets and eventually worked back up. And now I'm back to, you know, several years now, I'm back to five, four or five days a week of something. Sometimes it's a 10 minute workout. Sometimes it's an hour. It's a big mix of a lot of stuff. But you now let's, talk now let's take that. that. Let's take that now to the spiritual life. And I want, and you know, the, the key to that is discipline. Of course, I, I don't, when I work out, my discipline is to go surfing, or lately now to go golfing with my son, which has really helped me regain my my uh, my strength. But uh, yeah. but um, it's not it's it's it, I don't I don't work out. I play. In other words, I know you go work out, but you know you have fun doing it. But what I'm saying is, I do. I, uh, I enjoy it. Yeah. It takes a discipline. You know, you 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 know, I took out uh, the Nigerian nightmare, the the great fullback. Uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I forget his name now, but I took him out surfing one time. He was just packed with muscle. This was after he retired. And uh, I said, how do you get so strong? How do you stay so fit? He goes, because I have an appointment with myself every morning at 6 a.m. in the gym. Mm. So, okay, discipline. All right. So now talk about what this new program that you have that right. brings men into a discipline, into a discipleship a process with the Lord because you just don't say, well, I'm going to get in shape. You have to have a plan. And that's not just yeah. physically, but spiritually and in every area of our life. Absolutely. Yeah. We call it body, mind, soul. You got to get all three. You got to get the mind strong. Got to get the body strong. Got to get that soul strong, that spiritual aspect. And, you know, and after 31 years of doing this work, you know, you, you know, you know what it's like. You do the conferences, you do the talks, you do the men's events, you family events, whatever it may be. 
And people get all fired up. And emotion is great and inspiration is great, but inspiration is kind of like that emotional thing. It just kind of fades over time. Mm -hmm. But discipline, as you mentioned, is as soldiers will say, between emotion and discipline, discipline gets you through the foxhole or the battle in the foxhole. Discipline is what gets you through. Knowing what you're doing, your training, everything that builds up to the day to day. So we started something called the Battle Ready Coalition. This was one of three things we've started now. Battle Ready Coalition is a coalition of people, men, women, all ages, in fact. We've got people in their probably, I think, 80s. We've got them from Ireland and Scotland and the UK and Australia and India and, and the US and Canada and all over the place. And they come together and basically we have a monthly training video that we put out and every video and a manual that goes with it so they can, they can read it, they can print it off. Um, we have bonus footage that comes out. We have three, at least three, sometimes four live Zoom events every month. People can get in on it, and I talk for a bit, and we answer questions. We go back and forth. We pray together. We pray the rosary once a month. We pray the chapel to divine mercy once mm. a month. But the training videos approach is we're talking about here, Bear, all three aspects of the body, the mind, and the soul. With the body, we talk about and give ideas and some training uh, ideas and concepts on basic physical training to get in better shape. Not talking about world-class athlete stuff here. Now, you want to take it to that, that's available. But we want to at least get people moving, knocking out some push-ups, walking if you have to. If you're, if you're not able to just get, get up. Walking's, a, walking's walking. a great, you know, I, Doug, when I was, when I, was a, I think I was 29 years old, the Holy Spirit just, just I could just, just like, I didn't hear his voice, but he just said, I just felt, I heard the, the words, you're my walking man, go walk. Mm. This is when I was working for Land Lakes in the corporate office in Minnesota for a few years, and that became my prayer time. Mm. So walking is a great way to to pray the rosary to, and and to yes. listen to audio books, and to have time with the Lord. Walking is a great. It's, it's kind of like that's the beginning point, you know. <laughs> Get out and walk. It, oh yeah, yeah. It's a good starting point, and it's something everybody should be doing to some degree. But we talk about the physical. We talk about some training. We talk about diet. A lot I, of people don't think about what you put in your mouth affects everything even mentally emotionally right a lot of it affects your virtue yeah if you're yeah exactly if you're slothful and lazy maybe it's because of what you're eating maybe it, oh, yeah. you know yeah and people who struggle from depression some of it is clinical there's no question about it but an mm -hmm. awful lot of it is diet and lack of exercise related you know a good healthy diet and a decent exercise regimen can can really lift the cloud of depression of brain fog all these types of emotional so, so, and mental problems. so people don't wake up in the morning going let me see what should i do today for exercise it's a regimen you've got it figured out you know I, you know what it's going to be today and you know what's going to be tomorrow you know what it's going to be down the line i'm about to go travel i'm flying back to florida my, my wife's there right now and i and we have a little storage room there and i go cindy did you find my weight scale because I weigh in every morning, and every and I know exactly what I want to want my weight to be. Some point during the day, there's a mark I have to hit, you know, or I got to yeah. go train some more. I after, you know, so so there's a discipline there. There's a there's a plan there, right? And yeah. it's that true. It's true in their in, in in people's spiritual life too. You know, when people join the man cave, Doug, we always give them a, a shirt as a gift when they join, and I, I ask them their shirt size, and then they go, oh. It's triple XL or it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. We'll get that response yeah. back. Yeah. But it's interesting yeah. how so many men that join the cave, one of the first things they do is they begin to, ch they, they, begin, they begin to get on a healthy eating and exercise regimen. Because mm -hmm. if you're not able to, if you can't, you know, you, it, it kind of like it starts from the outside in sometimes. You start training and discipline physically and it translates into moral virtue on the inside but you but, but yeah and so so i'm sorry i stepped on your conversation about your program we're talking with doug berry we're going to come back you know i do that i have adhd a little bit. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to come back with more doug berry we're going to talk more about this 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 program uh and how you can become involved with it doug if people want to reach you what's the best website battlereadystrong.com i i remember 12 years ago i think it was when i first came across that and I go, who is this guy? And I, I, I subscribed, and then I flew out to to meet you in Nebraska. Yeah, you did. And you, and you were one of the first people to help me kind of get launched in my own ministry. So, uh, we'll be right back with the, with uh, more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Our website is deepadventure dot com. If you want to join up with uh, with Doug Berry and his new his this this essential program of being disciplined in, in mind, body, soul, where do they reach you again? Battlereadystrong dot com. BattleReadyStrong.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting 
the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bears Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Lately, we've really been just thanking and reaching out and, and affirming our mama bears out there. Uh, we know that you you receive a lot from our ministry personally, for what the, the content that we have. But whenever Cindy and I go out and I speak someplace, there will be a moment when the women kind of corner us, and there's like this visceral, deeply felt, need you know for us to reach out to their men we go to mass in the morning and there's the women there that have a wedding ring on and they're sitting plant praying the rosary and they're by themselves we call you the the mama bears i remember when I, that thought came to me i said we got to really affirm and reach out to our mama bears because they love our show and they're and it's their prayers that drive our ministry and it's their they're concerned for the men in their lives that bring the men to our ministry. And I'm not saying that what we're the content that we have isn't isn't great for women, but our target has always been that 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 man in the black pickup truck is the way I like to describe him, who is uh, who's kind of a lone ranger. He's lonely, he's isolated because he's failing in some areas of his life and he thinks he's the only one and he can't share his weaknesses with others. Uh, but that's kind of the beginning of when you when you can uh, respond to the gospel. But I said, let's call them mama bears. And I wasn't thinking of the soft, cuddly bears. I was thinking of when I was in Glacier Park, the grizzly bears that, that were up there and the black bears that were up there. And it's so interesting because the next day my son Jeremiah walked in the door and just burst out as he walked in the, the house. Hey, Dad, remember Glacier Park when we saw the, how vicious those mama bears were? And so that's what we refer to when we think of the women involved in our ministry as mama bears. And so you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you can click and become a member of the mama bears. You get a uh, long ride home coffee mug. But guess what else, ladies? Doug, do you see this on, on the YouTube video? It's a Catholic <laughs> biker. Awesome. It's a Catholic biker bear. Uh, we have about 40 of these left, so when you join the mama bears, get get the, this little teddy bear, too. Someone gave these to us. It's kind of cool. Uh, so... I, last time, when we were starting our conversation, Doug, and you're talking about your program, I got yeah. too excited about it, and I interrupted you. <laughs> so can you can you can you tell us again about that and how people, the benefits of it, the need for it, and how they can get involved? The, yeah, the, at battlereadystrong.com, you can go there and you'll find it there. And it's called the Battle Ready Coalition. That's one of three things that we're really focusing on: Battle Ready Coalition, coalition of people, men, women, all ages, all parts of the world. And it is a twenty-five. It's like twenty-four ninety-nine, I think, monthly. Uh, is what we're asking for. Um, and it provides one training video a month. It's only about 25 minutes long. It's not a lot. You work it at your own pace. Uh, everybody's at a different place on things. So we don't, we don't have you, you know, uh, be accountable where you got to check in, do this, that, and the other thing. Basically it's provided for you. We do three or four, depending on the month, zoom live events. So we can interact with you personally that way. We respond to your emails. We have printable training manuals. You can read them online. You can print them off. We have bonus footage that comes out. And what we do is we address the body, the mind, and the soul. We address growing spiritually, first and foremost, the most important thing. We talk about training the mind, and not just in knowledge of the faith, but the mind is amazing in that when it's disciplined, when it's focused, when it's cared for, it can develop, you can develop your own talents, gifts that you bring to the world, that you bring to others. So there's so many aspects of the mind that have to do, again, with everything from discipline and, and, and just take, and making the right choices and really connecting the right ways, interacting with other people appropriately and all. But then also the talents, gifts, and so forth, and most importantly, the knowledge of the faith. And then we have the body. 
a lot of people really disregard the body bear. You and I have talked about this. We've been through this with others. People, you know, they get concerned that the holier you become, the less you care for the flesh because the flesh isn't that important. And that's not true. Otherwise, St. Paul wouldn't have said that the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So one of our mottos is maintain the temple. Simply maintain it. You take care of it. Paragraph 2288 in the Catechism states that life and health are precious gifts from God, and we have a responsibility to be reasonably healthy and to take care of them. So what does that mean? Well, no excessive anything that undermines your health. All right, moderation in even treats and desserts and don't get excessive with the junk food. And I'm not a fan of junk food at all, but in general, let's really put the good stuff in the mouth that feeds the body. You don't got to eat only organic, although organic's really good. It's mm -hmm. basically less chemicals. Chemicals are not good in the body. Okay, let's just put it in general like that. So we address the we address diet, we address exercise, we address self-defense. Okay, because we're supposed to care for ourselves and others. So we we address these things in our in our monthly lessons in one way, shape, or form. We have the Zoom calls, the manuals, and basically the last thing I would say is about the coalition, Battle Ready Coalition, is accountability bear. You and I know, even as friends, you're in Hawaii, I'm in Texas, even when you're in Florida, if I called you or you called me and asked for something, we'd help each other, we'd be there. That accountability, that friendship, that's the sort of thing that we need as Catholics, a deep, godly accountability to one another. When I exercise and take care of myself, I'm not only taking care of myself, I'm in better shape to take care of the woman on the other end of the ring on my finger, my wife, my kids, my grandkids, my friends like you, Bear, and others. I'm also in better shape to care for someone in the street if someone needs help or the grocery store, or if there's a self-defense situation, I'm ready to engage to protect somebody. Whatever it may be, the healthier and stronger we are, body, mind, and soul, the better we are for others in this world, for the good of the community, for the good of the church as a whole. So that's one of the key things we offer is the Battle Ready Coalition at BattleReadyStrong.com. We also have a preparedness course, which is an emergency course. Anybody can buy right away. And basically what it does is help you be better prepared on a natural level and spiritual level for a crisis. So whether it's a self-defense situation or a national natural disaster, or I should say an uprising of uh, civil unrest or... Mm. Oh, that would never happen. A threatening government. Right. You know, I mean, everything we're seeing right now, Bear. So we put a course together called the Battle Ready Emergency Preparedness Course, which is a one-time buy, and you get all the updates now at whatever price you pay for it. We have discounts on it at times. Anything we add to the course yep. goes with the price that you pay, and it gets people ready. Food, water, medical, self-defense, and shelter. These five key areas that we all need, they're actually corporal works of mercy. You know, so, Doug, um, you've people... There's a, there's a little bit of a problem with the way this is presented. I think things, things sometimes. Um, I'm just going to say it like it is because I'm a CPA. I do a lot of taxes. Um, and this is a challenge to our Catholic brothers and sisters. There's a benefit when you when they subscribe for twenty four ninety nine, and it's it's incomparable. It's amazing how much work and effort went into that into your program. Mm -hmm. But Catholics, just going to say it like it is. They don't give the way Protestants give. It shouldn't be considered. I'm going to give you twenty five dollars and I'll get this for it. Yes, twenty four ninety nine. But then let then open. But open up your heart and give more to Doug's. Give even more to Doug's ministry. It shouldn't be like I'm paying you, so you'll give me this. It shouldn't be an exchange in that sense. It should be like, do you know how much uh, the, the the people involved in new evangelization? So many of them. It's just amazing the way they've laid down their lives. So, if the Lord gives you a nudge to donate to one of the one of these people involved in the new evangelization, by all means do it. So, I would say go and go and at least become part of one of these things. Doug's consider becoming part of one of those things, but then give a little bit more. But you know, there's so much effort goes into the 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 the, the new program is called what again? Battle Ready Coalition and the Battle Ready Emergency Preparedness Course. Okay, but you're so, right. There's a ton of work that goes. Okay, into them. so but here's the thing, Doug, is I know that a ton of that work isn't you. It's your it's your it's your sons and I think your daughters involved in your ministry too, and yeah. I wanted to bring that into place because my son Joshua Wozniak he does this radio production for us. He also is the genius behind all of our, the technology that it takes. It takes a lot of technology to, to you know just computer wise. He builds our computers. He makes sure we're up to date in protecting our software and latest software and hardware and all that sort of thing that it takes to do the the, the video productions, you know, first. Plus, he has inspirational uh, thoughts, you know, writing uh, as far as the direction things should go. 
And then my son Shane Wozniak, he's the video genius. He's the he's the he's the editor, the videography. He tells the people, put your camera here, put the sound here, and all of that. So we couldn't do that. You couldn't do what you do, and I couldn't do what I right. I do, without these young our, our 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 children involved in the ministry. And so, yeah. in a sense, you and I have that kind of kind of direct pipeline. We have a, a, a you know relationship with our kids that's more than just you know father son or father daughter, but we get to see them in action, uh, interacting with their their world uh, as they're growing up. So when we come back, I want to talk about um, as they're growing up. I don't mean that as they're entering more fully into the world because they are growing up. I want to talk. I want you to talk about um, what the Lord is saying to the younger generation. And I want to ask uh, the young men and women that are listening, if you're 30 years or say 35 or, or younger. To write to me at bear at deepadventure.com or go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you can see a contact us link. And I want you to tell me what your thoughts are. What is the Lord saying to your generation? Or what what questions do you have about what thoughts do you, would you, you know, what things that you want to share with me about your generation or what questions you might have? And we want it to be interactive. But we're going to talk to this vital, uh, it's almost like a hinge generation because what's happening right now hinges kind of on you on which direction uh, especially the western world is going to go we're talking with doug barry what's your website again doug battlereadystrong.com i strongly recommend if you don't you should at least go visit that website take a take advantage of what's there this is the bear wozniak adventure we want to let you guys know ewtn has received uh the six new episodes season three of long ride home uh, as we journey down uh, the the Blue Ridge Parkway with a pack of men uh, that are really seeking to go deeper with God and, 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 and really seeking out brotherhood and to understand the virtues. So uh, continue to pray for us and get excited because that's going to be out. But if you want to go to deepadventure.com, you can, if you become a Patreon member, you get access to all of the versions of, of all, all uh, 21 episodes of Long Ride Home, um, you get access to that so you can power watch it with your family. Mama Bears, are you listening? You can play those, you can have those playing in the background when, you're, when your son-in-law or someone shows up. It's been known to happen. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach Without your help, you can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak.
Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest is Doug Berry. And Doug uh, and I both have the privilege of working with our sons. I think he works with it. I think his daughter's involved in his ministry, too. Talk to us about that dynamic, uh, and then talk to, talk to this generation. What do you see in that generation? What is the Lord saying to that generation? Well, I, the, I mean, first of all, the, the blessing of having my, my children be part of this, you know, for years has been, uh, it's just, there's just no way to describe it. I they mean, got and, all these beautiful not, special gifts, you know, that oh, fit yeah, just yeah. well. And, like God I'm made not a man who doesn't have an idea of what I'm going to say most of the time, but, but I'm, I'm really kind of speechless <laughs> when it comes to talking about what a blessing it is to have my kids be part of this, this work. Uh, I've got one son who's videographer, and then I've got another son who writes, another son who runs social media, another son who is kind of a second camera operator slash editor, takes care of YouTube channel videos. So, you know, we've got a variety of different things that are functioning and happening, and they're all involved. I have a daughter and a daughter-in-law, both in connected in this as well. My daughter-in-law is kind of operations behind a lot of what we do with the coalition. I have another son-in-law who's going to be helping out, it looks like, too, uh, very soon. So having the, the dynamic of all of my children and, and children-in-law in one way, shape, or form connected to this is an enormous blessing. There's no question about that. Um, obviously, there's the dynamic of working with family. You've got to be careful to separate things the right way so that you don't, you know, you're not always talking work. You know, you've got to have family time that is apart from work time. So, you know, we try to do that, but it's all pretty, we're, you know, we try to be very prayerful about it, obviously, and that's that's the key to it. But you've also got to, on a natural, practical level, understand people have emotions and, and ideas and and you want to be be careful and respectful of all that as well. And that's just a that's an ongoing process. So it's been a blessing. It's amazing. Now, with young people in today's world, I would say this. I, I'm kind of inspired by um, a, a story that I heard. It was actually a documentary that goes back. I want to pull this up real quick. I got this on the, on the screen here. Um, the, John Paul II, when he went to Poland in 1979, right after he became pope, um, there's a documentary called, I think it's Nine Days That Changed the World. And mm-hmm. it had a lot to do with the eventual fall of, of uh, the Berlin Wall, communism and so forth. And, you know, the there's a battle out there is a first battle he talks about this to the young people called the battle of Westerplatte. the battle of Westerplatte was one of the was the first really one of the first german invasions into poland there were a handful i think it was like 150 to 180 maybe 200 max or so uh, young polish soldiers now these were young people they had hearts though I mean, we're talking 20s 19 20 21 you give or take in that ball pit, that ballpark that range they held off an estimated 3,000 Germans for seven days. Okay, they lost that battle, but they used what they had, their gifts, their talents, their skills, and their, above everything, their patriotism, their identity, who they were as free people to fight to preserve something. Now, we know what happens, anybody who studied World War II at all looked into it, is Poland got trounced pretty good. And of course, you had the, the Warsaw ghettos and Auschwitz and all these sorts of things that eventually in, in other camps and extermination of the Jews and so forth. And the, the brutality was off the charts. No question about it. But when John Paul II spoke to the young people that day in Poland in 79, and he spoke about the Battle of Westerplatte, what he was getting at to the young people was, you have something to give to the world that will affect generations to come. So I would say this. I believe God is always calling young people to this. To not look at your youth just as something for yourself, but look at your youth as a time period where you're training and developing for something that is greater and better than you can come up with anything for yourself alone. That is, you are part of something bigger than yourself. Anybody who who plays sports knows if it's a team sport, you know that when you're on a team, it's not about you. There's no I in team, as the saying goes. That's a cute metaphor, you know, little, little thing. But the point is, it's true. When you're in it with other people now as Catholics, as Christians in general, how about as part of civilization with everything happening, especially in our world right now, the way it is, young people need to realize, and I encourage you and beg you, please listen to this. And for us adults to train our young people in this, there's something so much bigger and greater in this world and out of this world eternally. If we commit and give our lives with, with, with zeal, with enthusiasm to try to make the world a better place for the salvation of souls and the glory of God first. These soldiers who fought in Westerplatte in 1939, they gave their lives, many of them. Now, they never had, a lot of them didn't have families. It's like the men that hit the beaches in Normandy or any young soldier out there, but the beaches in Normandy, the first wave that came into Omaha Beach, roughly 90% died. 
Now, many of them were 17, 18, 19 years old, but they were men who gave of themselves. Now, there are, there are again, great women who've done the same thing. And in the history of our faith, we have seen St. Tarsicius in the early centuries of the church to St. Maria Goretti in, the, in 1902, I believe, when she was murdered. Um, you've got amazing stories of young people, teenagers, even preteens, mm -hmm. who gave their lives for the faith that we, that we are on now, that we are in now. They stand, we stand on their shoulders and generations to come will stand on our shoulders. So to the young people, discover the talents, the gifts, the blessings that God has given you, develop them with prayer and daily discipline and be full of that zeal that Christ talks about. I've come to set the earth on fire. I wish it were ignited. And in these times, especially bears, we see all the restrictions and the mandates and the lockdowns. And we know that there's an effort for more of a globalist uh, attempt to enslave people. <laughs> We see it even within the church elements of that. We have got to be more engaged now than ever before in our modern times to protect and preserve our generation and generations to come. I had a, a young man on my show, the last individual I interviewed, 16 years old, and he leads a, a Catholic apologetics social mm. media outreach. Young, awesome. young yeah, um, <clears throat> I believe it's called Young, young Catholics apologetics but you or youth apologetics and i was i was with him in his uh i was on his his zoom call with his people but i wanted him on my show this young man uh very speaks with clarity is focused on catholic doctrine truth and and devotion to the lord and to mary but he was in a in a high school situation where he he was as a freshman he was fr president of the freshman class uh, the pro-life movement there, and then also there was uh, some um, activity going on in the school, homosexual activity in the school mm. that he uh, resisted, I guess going on in the bathrooms or whatever. As a result, he was forced to leave the school hmm. at the age of 16. He made a stand. He wasn't a jerk about it. He was just saying, look, you know, I'm pro-life. I, I have a voice. So I'm going to speak my mind. And that, whether it's this, this sort of promiscuity, whether it's homosexual or whatever, shouldn't be taking place in the school. And he was pushed out. And then he went to a Catholic school. Now he's, uh, praise God, he's, he's uh, going through an academy at home. But here's a young man, 16 years old, that's already faced a certain, a certain uh, martyrdom. What could be harder than a 16-year-old standing up against his peers? And standing for the Lord, and so this young generation—it's a hinge generation. <clears throat> their their ability to know truth—they really need to know their catechism. They really right. need to know truth because think about the Catholic catechism and the Catholic fame is it will inform you, and form you, and give you the the clarity of mind to understand uh, the moral teaching, as well as the doctrinal teaching, so that you can stand up for your generation. But this generation. This, this generation coming up right now that's being told, oh, you need to go uh, to, what do they call that, your safe zone? And that takes oh, offense. You're safe, you're safe, yeah, your safe place. Your and, safe, and, and, space. Yeah. safe space. Yeah. And, you're, and, and, and that takes offense at everything. And I, I think I recall Paul saying that love does not take offense. I mean, yeah. it's like it, it, they've taken everything and flipped it upside down. you got about two more minutes where you just give – we pray for you know speak to them and then pray for them right now yeah to the guys out there look there, there's no question by the grace of god we have been created with i like to say the king david dna david dna i want to mention this simply because when david stepped into that battle against goliath goliath had been mouthing off for 40 days he'd come out in the mornings and the afternoons beating his chest saying give me somebody give me your best when david stepped in it wasn't about machismo it wasn't yeah let me show you who i am David stepped up and said essentially this, you're mocking God's army, effectively you're mocking God, and that's not gonna happen on my watch. And we men have that same King David DNA. We're created the same as David, in the sense of as a man, testosterone, bones, muscles, you name it, we have it in us. The difference is what we're choosing to allow into our hearts and minds. Are we seeking God? Are we letting God, are we cooperating with God's grace in our lives? But David stepped into that battle he was outmatched in the sense, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Goliath estimated six cubits in a span was about nine foot nine inches. Massive, enormous man. David's a shepherd boy. He comes at him with no armor. Goliath's breastplate alone is 90 pounds, 9-0, nine 90 pounds. This man is a, is a beast. He's brutal. David has skill. So I say to men out there, we've got to be skilled men. We've got to be prayerful men. 
We've got to be deeply committed and convicted men, but that only happens when we cooperate with God's grace. David cooperated with God's grace, so much so that God says, it's the only character in Scripture where God says, this is a man after my own heart. David was a warrior. David was a man who said, not on my watch. David was a man who trained himself in discipline, as we talked about earlier, Bear. And David was a man who loved. He loved God first, and he loved his fellow soldiers, his fellow you know, family men, compatriots, you name it. He was a man after God's own heart. We need to imitate as men that King David DNA. It's in us. It is already there. It's let's you do it. Yeah, man, you know that you are called to be a hero. You know it. Yes. Stop stop apologizing for being manly. It's time to be manly, not macho manly. Manly is someone who lays down their lives. Lord Jesus, bless our young generation. Inspire, encourage, give them a nudge. Let them know what the next step is. Draw them close to you. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We, uh, Got to go, Doug. We'll have you back soon, okay? Thanks, Bear. <laughs> okay. Until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.